Welcome to Mrs. Taylor's math class. Today's topic is FTCE Elementary K-6 Math Subtest. Competency 2, Knowledge of Operations, Algebraic Thinking, Counting, and Number in Base 10. Now let's begin class. A student was responsible for taking care of a plant over a three month period. The student measured and recorded the height of the plant at the end of each month as shown in the table. Which of the following equations relates the height of the plant H and the number of months M that the student had taken care of the plant, assuming a constant rate of growth? This problem wants you to use the slope-intercept form. The slope-intercept form is y equals mx plus b. And this is the format your answer needs to be in. So let's go and identify all of the pieces. Which of the following equations relates the height of the plant H and the number of months M? So let's put these variables H and M in our table. So height of the plant is going to be H here and this is going to be M. The next thing I want you to do, you have to identify the pieces of information in the slope intercept form. Your M is your slope, and your B is your, I'll put it down here, your y-intercept. So you need to find this information from the table. Your y-intercept is going to be the easiest thing to find in this type of table because you, in your first column, you have a zero. And so if you have a zero in your first column, which is your X column, then you can find your Y intercept, which is seven. So if we are looking at this problem, Y equals MX plus B, the B portion is going to be plus seven. So already, if you know that, you can go ahead and eliminate two of your answer choices. We can eliminate um, answer choice A because it says plus 2 and answer choice B because it says plus 2. So now we need to figure out well, what is going to be your slope. In order to be to find your slope, slope has to be, um, in order to find your slope, you need to subtract two values from your second column and then the same two values from your first column. So I'm going to say 13 minus 11. That's going to get me 2. And because I said 13 minus 11, I need to keep the same format, 3 minus 2. And that's going to get me 1. So your fraction is 2 over 1, which is also 2. This is how you find the value of m or your slope. So in place of the M, you're going to put the number two. You're gonna keep the variable X and you're gonna keep the variable Y for now. Now, how do they put, if you look at your answer choices, you do not see the variable Y and X there. But up here in this first column, it is considered to be your X column and your second column is your Y column. So in place of the X, I'm going to put the variable M and in place of the Y, I'm going to put the variable H. So Y is going to be H, keep the number two, and then X is going to be the letter M, and then plus seven. Now look at your answer choices. This is why we have D as our answer. Simplify the expression. 90 minus 60 divided by 30 plus 10. To solve this problem, we need to do the order of operations. So, you probably heard of it, PEMDAS, parentheses, exponents, multiplication and division, addition and subtraction. Of course, we read these from left to right, both of them. 
So now let's begin. We have 90 minus 60 divided by 30 plus 10. Are there any parentheses? No. Exponents? No. Multiplication? No. Division? Yes. So let's do our division first. And we have 90 minus, um, this is going to be 2, and then plus 10. Now, do we have addition? Yes. Do we have subtraction? Yes. But they say read it from left to right. So the first thing that shows up is your subtraction. So you got to read it. 90 minus 2 is going to be 88. And then plus 10 is going to get me 98. So my answer is D. Which step should be done first to simplify the expression? Again, this problem here wants you to use the order of operations. But it's only asking you for the first step. So in order to do that, remember it is parentheses, exponent, multiplication and division, addition and subtraction. Are there any parentheses? No. Exponents? No. Multiplication? Yes. Division? Yes. But we're reading from left to right. So the first thing that shows up is the 4a divided by 2a. That's going to be our first step. So we're going to pick answer choice C. Which of the following is not equivalent to 22 over 7? So 22 over 7 is an improper fraction. So let's write that down. Improper fraction. There are a couple of ways you can solve this problem. So let's first change this 22 over 7 to a mixed number. Now remember, a mixed number is a whole number plus a fraction. So in order to change this, you have seven into 22. That's gonna get you three, this is 21, and then that's a one. So as a mixed number, this is going to be three and one over seven, okay? Now let's look at your answer choices. You need to do these one at a time. So the first one, two and eight over seven. Two and eight over seven looks like this, okay? That's what a mixed number is. It's an addition problem of a whole number and a fraction. Now you could do this one or two ways. You can change this mixed number to an improper fraction, or you could rewrite this as a different type of mixed number or an equivalent one. But because I think it might be easier, in this case, just to change this to 22 over 7. So in order to do that, I'm going to write it big at first. 22, I mean, sorry, 2 and 8 over 7. You need to multiply the 7 times 2 and then add the 8. So if I say 7 times 2, I'm going to get 14. If I add the 8, I get 22. So this is 22 over 7. And so is that equivalent? Yes, it is. I do not want this answer choice. Okay, let's do the next one. Now we have 1 and 15 over 7. You're going to, again, multiply the denominator times the whole number and then add the numerator. So 1 times 7 is 7. And then you're going to add on 15 and you get 12, 22. So this question here, 1 and 15 over 7 is also equal to 22 over 7. So we do not want this answer. Okay. This one is very interesting. So you have 3 and then you have 7 over 1 plus 1 over 7. To work this out, this is really like 3 over 1, so I'm going to say 3 times 7, and I get 21 over 1 plus 1 over 7. This is going to equal 21 plus 1 over 7. You already can see that this number is way too big. 
So it doesn't even equal three and one over seven because it's already a mixed number and it's a proper mixed number where you have your numerator is smaller than your denominator. So 21 and one over seven is not going to be equal to 22 over seven or three and one sevenths. So this is your answer choice here. But let's do ourselves do justice and let's do answer choice D. Three times seven over seven plus one over seven. So this would be three times one plus one over seven. This is equal to three plus one over seven, which is equal to three and one over seven. So this is not, this is equivalent, so we don't want that answer. Simplify the following expression, 30 divided by seven minus two times two. So let's rewrite the problem, 30 divided by parentheses seven minus two times two. Again, this is going to be the order of operations. Ooh, and so we are Again, this is going to be the order of operations. And we're going to be using PEMDAS, P-E-M-D-A-S, reading from left to right. So do we have parentheses? Yes, we do. Let's do them first. So 7 minus 2 is going to get us 5. So let's rewrite the problem. 30 divided by 5 times two. Do we have division? Yes, we do. Well, do we have multiplication? Yes, we do. Do we have division? Yes, we do. But reading from left to right, we have to do division first. So 30 divided by five is six. And then times two, which is the last operation, is going to get us 12. Crew T just purchased three shirts, one skirt, and three pairs of shoes. She would like to compute the change she would receive from a $100 bill. Which operation should she use last? So for each item, she would need to multiply the price times the number of items. So her first operation would be multiply or multiplication. After she does her multiplication, then she would need to add the totals. So her second operation would be addition. After she has all the totals, then she would need to subtract the 100 minus the totals. And that would give you the change. So the last operation is subtraction. Which equation illustrates the associative property of multiplication? So as we know, the answer is going to be B. Because the A and B are inside the parentheses on the left-hand side of the equation. But on the right-hand side of the equation, the B and the C are inside the parentheses. So you're saying that B is associated with A on the left-hand side of the equation. But on the right-hand side of the equation, the letter B is associated with C. And of course, multiplication is the operation used in this equation. But let's look at the other choices. Answer choice A represents the community property of multiplication. Answer choice C is going to be the distributive property. And it's the distributive property because the C 
the variable C is, a, is distributed to the A and to the B. Answer choice D has addition operations. So this is going to be the associative property of addition. Again, you see here that the A and the B are in parentheses on the left-hand side. And on the right-hand side, the B and the C are in parentheses. So the B is being associated with the A on the left-hand side, and B is associated with the C on the right-hand side. A teacher is explaining a mental mathematics strategy to the class and says, suppose we want to add 76 plus 9. One way to do this addition problem is to think 76 plus 9 is the same as 76 plus 10 minus 1 because 10 minus 1 is 9. By adding 76 and 10, we get 86. Then subtracting 1 gives the answer 85. This kind of thinking is called making 10. What type of strategy is being taught? So we know that A is our answer, but why is it our answer? It tells you right here, the definition of compensation is to adjust one term to make what you are adding easier to solve. So here they made they adjusted the term 9. We have 76 plus 9. So they adjusted 9 to be 10. They got an answer. And because they adjusted it by 1, they subtracted 1 and got the actual answer. Now, for partitioning, Partitioning involves taking a large number and splitting that number into two smaller numbers. So for partitioning, it would be 76 plus 9. But then you would split this up into 70 plus 6 and then plus 9. Now I would add the 6 and the 9 together first and I would get 70 plus 15 and then I would get 85. For answer choice C, estimation, you want a number close to the exact number. And then for rounding, you want to adjust the number to a particular place value. So rounding involves place value. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Class is dismissed.